Now to a developing story. Two boys are still missing at a lake in western New Mexico. And in just a couple of hours, divers going to be back out looking for them. Noah Hooper and Seth Stevenson, 14 and 16 years old, disappeared Sunday here at Camado Lake. It's about 30 miles from Arizona's border. The two had been helping with summer programs at a religious camp for deaf children nearby. They were last seen in a deeper part of the lake, jumping from island to island. Anytime there's, there's evidence that the people were in or around the water, and last seen around the water, we're going to search that, that body of water entirely to rule that out. If, uh, if we do come up with the remains, then at least we can bring some closure to the family. Investigators searched the woods nearby too, but sadly didn't find any sign of the boys. We'll have updates on this story later today here on News 13. And happening now, medical examiners are about to start the autopsies on the 19 firefighters who were killed in a wildfire in Arizona this weekend. And also investigators there are going to find out exactly what went wrong in the wilderness. Yeah, this is such a sad story. Meanwhile, the blaze near the town of Prescott, Arizona is at 8,400 acres with none of it contained. So far, at least 50 homes have been destroyed. But fire officials told CBS News the actual number could be as high as 200. Strong winds fanned the flames on Sunday and they could pick up again today. However, some forecasters say a thunderstorm could also hit the area along with the strong winds. Last night, federal authorities took over management of the Yarnell Hill fire. That's what the fire is being called. This means they could bring in more crews to battle the flames. Meanwhile, back here in New Mexico, Governor Susana Martinez has ordered flags to be flown at half staff in honor of the 19 firefighters killed in Arizona. And Santa Fe's fire chief is reaching out to the commander of the firefighters who were killed in Arizona. That's because the group, the Granite Mountain Hotshots, were just here in New Mexico. They were on the front lines trying to protect the Thompson Ridge fire from spreading to homes in the Hemas. Santa Fe's fire chief talked with the crew's commander late last night. He knows the men and women out in Arizona are hurting, and his firefighters are too. The 19 people who perished from Granite Mountain Hotshots, they perished together. And to me, that speaks volumes about their leadership and their crew cohesiveness and, and the development of that crew and what they meant to each other. Chief Litzenberg is offering to send some of his firefighters to Arizona, but he doesn't know if they're needed there just yet. Now, there is some good news on the wildfire front here in New Mexico. The Thompson Ridge Fire in the Jemez is now 100% contained. Meanwhile, in the Pecos, the Tres Lagunas Fire is now at 10,000 acres and almost contained. It's been burning since May 30th when it was sparked by a fallen power line. And there is still much work to be done on the Jerosa Fire. That, that one is burning in the Santa Fe National Forest. It is now being fought from the air because of steep, rugged terrain. Lightning sparked the wildfire on June 10th in the Pecos, and it is still not contained. More than 11,000 acres have been wiped out so far. And then the largest wildfire in the state continues to grow as well. We're talking about the Silver Fire in the Gila National Forest. It has charred nearly 137,000 acres near Kingston. It is only 54% contained. All right, meteorologist Kristen Van Dyke is here now. Kristen, you said earlier that there's a chance it could get some rain down in the Gila today, right? That's right, yeah, that's going to be a good thing because the moisture is certainly increasing in that area. However, what we'll have to watch for will be the strong gusts out ahead of any storms that may move into the area. So south winds at 10 to 20 miles an hour, that'll be the, uh, the wind as we go through the afternoon as it picks up. But once those storms pop up, uh, you could have winds in excess of 50 miles an hour at times. Temperature-wise, that is going to be better for the firefighters down battling the silver fire in the low 80s. But again, the main concern will be the thunderstorm gusts where those winds could get really erratic and be very, very strong. We have winds exceeding 58 miles an hour in some of the storms that moved towards the southwest yesterday. Uh, dew points, how we measure how much moisture is in the air, and a lot of these look more like monsoon season. Uh, we're seeing them in the 40s and 50s, so there's a lot of moisture to work with. That helps when it comes to fighting the fires. Up in the northern mountains, uh, we have also a lot of moisture to get those storms going this afternoon. So more rain on the way could get heavy in times, and uh, we will have to watch for, for the potential even for some flash flooding and some of the burn scars from previous fires. I'll have the details on that coming up in your forecast in just a few minutes. Happening now at 536, the murder trial of a former Albuquerque police officer is switching gears today. It's now the defense's turn to try to prove Levi Chavez did not kill his wife back in 2007, and its first witness is supposed to be Levi's mother. The prosecution wrapped up its case yesterday. That's when the defense asked the judge to direct the jury to acquit Levi on charges of first-degree murder. 
We do not have the level of evidence that would allow a reasonable fact finder to find Levi Chavez guilty as to either count. As you can imagine, prosecutors disagreed, pointing to testimony from earlier in the day. A firearms expert testified that Levi's police gun was found with a round in the chamber and the magazine unseated, something Tara, they say, could not have done if she'd shot herself. Someone had to press that magazine release after it was fired. The judge decided there was enough evidence to keep this trial going. Levi's defense will try to prove Tara was depressed and did kill herself. He has not said if he will take the stand. Well, Amanda in Albuquerque has been accused of attacking people over and over again and getting off over and over again may finally be in some big trouble this morning. Turin Johnson has assault and battery charges going back to 2004. Look at all the mug shots. I think there are 27 of them. In every case except one, the charges were dismissed, often because of concerns about his mental health. But two weeks ago, investigators say Johnson attacked a postal worker in the Heights. So now he is charged with assaulting and impeding a federal employee. And the feds usually don't cut criminals breaks. Well, San Juan County Sheriff's deputies now have a person of interest in connection with a recent murder. Randy Robinson's body was found on June 22nd. She was just 22 years old and had been stabbed to death. Now investigators say this man, Michael Graham, is a, quote, person of interest in the case. Deputies say they found several homemade explosives in his truck and guns in his home. So they arrested Graham on the explosives charges, but he has not been charged in Robinson's death. Well, funds for research at New Mexico State University are on the decline. According to the Las Cruces Sun News, research and development has fallen more than 16%. Federal funding has also decreased, while nationwide competition for grants is on the rise. And MSU has received $136 million in grants during the last fiscal year.